Well, even as we near the election date that is coming up next month, uh, there is something that happened this week. Two unique things happened. One bizarre and the other can be defined as heroic. Now, of course, uh, amid the detailed uh, supreme judgment, there are certain bizarre things that happened. The swarm of bees uh, that attacked people who were camped at the Supreme Court and there was one act of heroism. Uh, the journalist who actually helped the disabled man move to safer ground from the swarm of bees or away from the swarm of bees. We have him in studio this evening. And the question I'm so curious to ask amid all of this politics that we're having, what really pushed you to do this? Why did you even do it? Do you want the easy answer or the hard one? Uh, which one do you prefer to go with? <laughs> uh, the easy answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you give it a bit of thought, then I might have something else to say right. about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so which is the hard one? The hard one is that um, it's the bit that requires a bit of thought. And uh, essentially, um, I would say God, quite simply. Right, yeah. God. Yes. Uh, but in the moment, what was the thought that crossed your mind when you were actually going there to pick him up and to carry him away from the swarm of bees? See, here's what happened. The, my instinct, um, and I would imagine the same instinct that everyone had in that situation was to flee. Because anyone who's ever been stung by a bee, you know, is nothing to joke with. So my instinct was to run and escape, right? Save myself but the thing that got me to it was a scream i just heard a scream and this really agonizing scream it was just and that's what caught me and captured me and when i turned and i saw him uh let's just say before i realized it i was across the road you were across and, the road yes. and lifting him up yeah. interesting and so that conversation will be coming up uh, throughout the show and we will be having that conversation of course a little later during the bulletin and there's a whole lot more that we know about Kenyans uh, that they choose to unite at the oddest of hours. Joe would like to take us through some of these moments. Well, thank you very much, Joy. Indeed, Victor's story is one of a true reflection of the Kenyan spirit. That is generosity, kindness. And what many may not know was during the time that Victor rescued the physically challenged beggar, um, Victor was stung by bees and he lost his phone in the process. And what we want to look today is what are some of the other instances that Kenyans have come out together to demonstrate their patriotism. If we go back in 2010, 2010 the Kenyan marathoner uh, by the name of Jacqueline Kiplimo during the Zenkai International Marathon in China encountered a male runner who was dehydrated on the marathon and offered to volunteer to give uh, this runner water. This runner was unable to grasp the water bottles that, that were being distributed since he had no limbs. But uh, Jacqueline Kiplimo took this act of courage and sacrificed her number one position in the marathon to come in second. This, uh, during this time, she also lost the prize money, which was 10,000 US dollars. Now, on a larger scale, uh, you might recall the Kenyans for Kenya initiative that was, da that was launched in 2011. It was an initiative uh, done by a group of uh, corporate organizations, including KCB, Kenya Red Cross, the Media Owners Association, and Safaricom, to basically rally Kenyans around this cause. Now, uh, the media had highlighted the plight of approximately 3.5 million Kenyans in northern Kenya who are facing starvation. And it was reported that that particular famine was the worst drought that had been experienced in 60 years. Through this initiative, the target was to raise 500 million shillings in one month. But Kenyans surpassed that target and raised 664 million shillings. Very impressive. Then we can uh, recall the someone tells CNN hashtag that trended. In fact, it is reported that there were 120,000 tweets uh, on this hashtag in 24 hours. What had happened is CNN had uh, reported that Kenya is a uh, terror hotbed in line with President Obama's visit to Kenya. 
And uh, Kenyans did not take that lightly. So they went to Twitter to protest this, and this even necessitated the CNN executive vice president and managing director, uh, Mr. Maddox, to come and issue an apology to President Uhuru Kenyatta. Last but definitely not least, we have the Westgate attack. Now this week we celebrated the fourth anniversary of one of the most tragic terror attacks to hit the Kenyan soil, where approximately 67 people lost their lives and more than 175 were injured. However, in the midst of this uh, terror, Kenyans remained unbowed. We saw Kenyans coming up to donate food. They came out to donate blood. In fact, it has been reported that during the Westgate attack, the Kenya Red Cross experienced the largest blood drive, where more than 6,000 units of blood were donated. So this is just to show that Victor's story is a reflection of the true Kenyan spirit. Back to you, Joy. Well, thank you so much, Joel. Very interesting insights there. And you can clearly see um, the Kenyans do go out, or we do go out of our way to actually uh, make uh, these decisions by ourselves. But then ask yourself the question, what happens to us during political season? Do we all of a sudden adopt a different personality? Do we adopt different characters? Where is that peace that is demonstrated uh, during these other moments where we are united as one? Well, we are going to also have that conversation a little, a little later on the bulletin. But for now, let's take a short break. More news coming up. Uh, Health Digest as well will be coming up shortly. Do stay with us. <laughs> 